Good e Wait a minute. Good, good evening. <laughs> all right. It's good to see you all here tonight. Uh, we have a lot of people out of town. We have the holiday upon us. Um, we'll get back in the groove right after this. But we're here, and that's what matters. And, uh, and God's here, too. We know that when we assemble in his name, he's with us. So our first song will be song number 881. And if we didn't have that, I would say you don't even got to turn there because we should know that one. That's for sure. 881, both first and last verse only. All right, here we go. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one of that silver line. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we will never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold don't think me poor or deserted or lonely i'm not discouraged i'm heaven bound i'm just a pilgrim in search of a city i want a mansion a robe and a crown i've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that bright land where we'll never grow and someday yonder we'll never more wander but walk the streets that are purest gold same opening well it's going to be up there 882 no tears in heaven no tears in heaven see how many see the first and third verse 882 and again, let's all sing. No tears in heaven, no sorrows given, all will be glory in that land. And there'll be no sadness, and all will be gladness when we shall join the happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Some morning yonder, we'll choose to ponder or things this life has brought to view. And all will be clear and safe one be dear. In heaven where all will be made new. No tears, no tears, no tears up there. Sorrow and pain will all have flown. And no tears, no tears, no tears up there. No tears in heaven will be known. Before we have our scripture reading and opening prayer, we'll sing song number 595, please. 595. 95. We'll sing the first and third verse also, please. I come to the garden alone. Following this song, we'll have our scripture reading and opening prayer. Again, let's all sing. I come to the garden alone While the dew is still on the roses And the voice I hear falling on my ear The Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him Though the night around me be falling 
but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there and none another has ever known Amen Tonight's scripture reading will come from Mark chapter 16, verses 15, or yeah, 15 and 16. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Would you pray with me, please? Our most gracious Heavenly Fathers, we come before you. We thank you for another wonderful day, Lord, that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the sunshine that you sent our way today. And we thank you for the, the, the bright blue sky that we had. We thank you for, for just blessing us with the opportunity that we get to come, come here again tonight and worship you. We're so thankful, Lord, for the, the freedoms that we have in this country that we live in. We're thankful for all the many blessings that, that we don't deserve, but you, you send to us. And we're just thankful for that. Lord, we're thankful for this building that we have. And we're thankful that we can come and people that <clears throat> take care of it. We, we ask that you bless them. And we, pr we pray that you be with all those that served uh, in your work. And we pray, Lord, that you will be with us tonight and help us as we study your word. We pray that you'll help us to uh, put the outside things away. Help us to leave the world outside and help us to focus on your word. Help us to focus on the things that's being brought to us and be able to use it to strengthen your kingdom. We know, Lord, there's many that are sick and we pray that you be with those that are sick. And we pray that you, if it's your will, that you'll restore them. We pray now that as we go through this service that you be with us. Forgive us of our sins is our prayer in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Our next song will be song number 574, please. 574. Oh, how I love Jesus. We'll sing the first and third verse also of that song. 574. And again, let's all sing. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its worth. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in his sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Amen. The invitation song tonight, the song at the close of the lesson, will be 662. 662. And at that time, we'll sing one, two, and three of that song. 662 will be the invitation song. The song before the lesson will be 589. 589. 589. We'll sing all three verses. Convenient. Why don't we stand? Leaning on the everlasting arms. And let's all sing. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Sing arms. Oh, how sweet to walk in this pilgrimage. 
pilgrim way, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, how bright the path grows from day to day, leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. What have I to dread? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. I have blessed peace with my Lord so near. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning, safe and secure from all alarms. Leaning, leaning, leaning on the everlasting arms. Good evening. So good to be back with you again tonight. We had a couple of, we had some visitors this morning and uh, encouraged that they apparently want to come back. And that's great. Remember that we are ramping up towards our friends, family, and neighbors Sunday that we really want to make a push to invite people to come to that. Maybe somebody that you've wanted to invite to a service but don't know how to approach them. Well, here's a specific opportunity of a service that we're having to welcome them amongst us as we worship God together. Our visitors were one of our asked to come to church. Absolutely. Yes, and the ones that came this morning were asked, and uh, they showed up. Sometimes that's all that it takes. And uh, that day, sometimes, I heard Dale Jenkins speak one time, and he said, you got to have a specific invitation if you want somebody to specifically come, or something like that. Sometimes we have open invitations. Well, hey, we'd love for you to come to church sometime. Well, hey, we'd love to study the Bible with you sometimes, but we never give them a date. Does anybody ever come to your house if you offer them dinner, but never give them a date? Usually not, right? You got to tell them, hey, I want you to come next Tuesday. Hey, I want you to come this time or that time. And uh, so that's, that's why I think it's good to have an, a friend's family, neighbor's day, whatever we're going to call it and encourage others to come on a specific time and that'll be in october got a lot of exciting things coming up specifically what we're going to talk about tonight however is prayer and we're not going to get into every aspect of prayer and how we pray and why we pray we'll touch on some of those things but we're going to look at a specific story in acts if you want to turn to Acts chapter 3 and chapter 4, that's where we're going to be tonight pr primarily. How do you pray? You throughout your life have heard probably thousands, tens of thousands of prayers. Who knows how much, depending on how many times uh, you've come and heard prayers, how many times at your own dinner table maybe you've prayed or, or, or heard your parents pray or growing up or whatever it may be but we've all heard a lot of prayers in our life and those prayers are to God but we're also listening and praying with whoever's leading the prayer hopefully just like Donald prayed this uh, tonight and we typically don't have just rogue prayers that we memorize we're actually praying and uh, asking God for certain things, thanking Him for certain things, but we don't just necessarily memorize a prayer and not think about it. And that's 
sometimes how people start learning. Little children sometimes in Bible class maybe have uh, more of a repetition in their prayer. But eventually, hopefully they'll have a prayer that's from the heart. And how we pray and what we pray uh, matters. And so I want us to think about our prayers tonight in a different kind of way. So a lot of times, maybe 10% of our prayer is thanking God for something. And maybe 10% give, is asking for guidance. And then maybe 10% asking for forgiveness for our sins or for something that we've done wrong. Maybe the rest is asking for people that are hurt, that are sick, that are struggling in some way, thinking of others. And of course, there's nothing wrong with any of those things. Those are all good things to pray. And, uh, but maybe our prayers could be focused more in a different direction that we don't typically think about our prayers being focused. So for right now, we're going to go back to Acts chapter 3, but let's look at Acts chapter 4 for a second. Specifically starting in verse 24. And let's read through 31. And when they heard it, they lifted their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them, who through the mouth of our father David, your servant, said by the Holy Spirit, Why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed for truly in this city they were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate along with the Gentiles and the people of Israel verse 28 to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place and now Lord look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your words with all boldness. Two more verses. While you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed throughout through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. So there's a backstory to this situation here. And we're going to get into some of the specifics of this. But in Acts chapter 3, Peter and John were going through and a lame man stopped them and asked for some help. And they said, we don't have silver and gold, but what we do have, we'll, we'll give freely. And this man was healed Okay? And everyone was astonished. Everyone was amazed. And Peter, I believe it was, that said, uh, why, do you, why are you astonished at this thing? It's not because of me. It's because of the man you killed, Jesus. It's through him that I'm able to perform these miracles. It's by God through Jesus that this has even been able to happen. And now that he has this perfect health. And then he told him to repent. And then the prophets proclaimed, and uh, verse 26 of Acts chapter 3, God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. So how did it say that God blessed them? Not by healing them, not by keeping them out of danger or harm's way, but by turning them from wickedness. And... Uh, we think of blessings in our own way sometimes. We think of blessings as things that, that we like, things that we want. But oftentimes a blessing from God is not even what we want. It's what we need. It's what He freely gives us, but we don't always know that we need it. And, and then sometimes the things that we want 
we don't get because they wouldn't be good for us if we did. But we think of blessings maybe sometimes different than God thinks of blessings. And, and he's the one who actually tells us what a blessing is, not the other way around. But here it said that it was a blessing by turning them away from their wickedness. Did they have struggles? Did first century Christians have problems at this point? Did they have difficulties that they were dealing with? Well, it was about to come even more so, wasn't it? But the high priests and Sadducees were not happy that they were teaching Jesus. This Jesus, once again, he's already gone. Why does he keep coming back? Well, obviously, we know the answer to that. Because that was the whole point. He was raised from the dead. Now, Christians can be named and follow him. And he's given forgiveness through that very sacrifice. And they're teaching him. And this man, capital M, that they thought that they had gotten rid of. Okay, so Peter and John came back to the other disciples and talked to them. Told them what happened. And then they prayed. What did they pray? They didn't pray specifically for the sick to be healed. Not for God to take away this persecution. They didn't pray that. They didn't pray that it wouldn't be difficult in spreading Christ's name. But that showing God's sovereignty to pray for them to be strong and carry on even in the midst of trials. Have you ever prayed that? Do We, we typically... I was at Florida School of Preaching for uh, over the course of a few years going taking classes there with other guys that wanted to be preachers. And I remember specifically one of the other guys saying, sometimes I feel like we've got it too easy and that we don't appreciate what we have because we have it so easy. And sometimes I wish that there was more persecution of Christians so that we could actually appreciate what God has given us and be able to easily see the difference between a Christian who's not willing to actually live for God and a Christian who's willing to stand against anything for God. Well, I don't, I don't want to pray that prayer. Uh, however, I understand his perspective. And I don't think he was saying he actually is wanting us to live in persecution in that way. But I do think that we as Christians sometimes can get very lackadaisical because we do live in a free country. And there's some scares of sometimes bad things happening and, and closing the churches, even through COVID. We had a little taste. There were some churches that were told they couldn't meet. And there were some churches uh, that maybe were, were persecuted. I don't know that any around here were. Uh, where I was at Broad Street at the time, we, we were not. Although it was a struggle because some people felt so compelled to stay home and some people felt so compelled to be there, nobody knew what to do. The elders didn't know what to do. The members didn't know what to do. And it was a crazy time. I can only imagine the difficulty if we had persecution like they had in, uh, after Jesus died and the persecution of the first century Christians it would be incredibly hard. But what did they pray for? They prayed for boldness, didn't they? And to be able to preach God's word no matter what. And the place shook after Peter and John, after uh, they came back. I think God was pleased that they were on the right track. They knew what they were doing and they were ready to live for God no matter the cost because it's worth our very lives. Because it's worth everything that we have and everything that we can give to His cause for His will to be done. The place shook. God was with them. And they spread God's word. And that's what we're supposed to do. No matter what, live for God, spread his word. In Acts chapter 4 and uh, verse 20, 
uh, there's a reference to Matthew 28, 19 and Mark 16, 15 through 16 that was read there. Through dispersing Christians because of persecutions, it helped spread the gospel even more. And when they, when they spread out, God can use that too. And God's plan will be delivered no matter what. You know, we can't, they, they couldn't deter Jesus from dying when he was supposed to die. They didn't, he, he, he didn't die before he was supposed to die. He didn't die after he was supposed to die. He wasn't a second place possibility. He did exactly what he came here to do because nobody can tell Jesus or God, or the Holy Spirit, what to do and how to do it. If God wants something done, it will be done. It does not matter who plot anything. Just like it says here, uh, back in a reference to Psalms, chapter 2, verses 1 through 6, that's what this is. Why did the Gentiles rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his anointed. There that's in Acts chapter 4, verse uh, 25 and 26. You can go to Psalm chapter 2 and read that story. But it's just so crazy to me and amazing that it doesn't matter how strong the strongest people can get together. They can form a clan of, it doesn't matter how many people, they can plot all these things and yet God's will will be done. It doesn't matter. They plot in vain. The kings of earth set themselves and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord, against his anointed. And then what happened? And it says, and I love the way it's turned around in verse 28 of Acts chapter 4, to do whatever your hand had planned for them to do. It's like, you can't trick God. God, God God's going to take what he needs to take out of the situation. They can have all the secret meetings they want. His will will be done. Now, it's his will for us to choose him, so he's not going to make us, like we talked about this morning. That's not his will. We're, we're not to be uh, servants by force, but servants by choice. That's what he wants. And so he's not going to change that part of it. And we have free will to choose him or not to choose him. However, if something needs to happen in the world, God's going to make sure it happens. There are times that we struggle with our faith. And we say, how do we know that every book that's in here is the right book to be in here? Because, yeah, we call this the canon. We call this the measuring stick. But men put this together, did they not? After Jesus died. And they had to comb through all the documents. And uh, we were talking, um, I guess it was last week, J.D. and I were talking about <clears throat> the Apocrypha. And how do we know that any of those books are not meant to be in the Bible? Well, a lot of times I don't even think they're claiming inspiration. A lot of times those, those books aren't claiming to be inspired by God. But if we can have faith that God put in place what needed to be put in place, made this world in six days, gave us everything that we need for life and godliness, which he did. We mess up. He floods the world. We mess up. He confuses our language. We mess up. He gives us Jesus. He can give us the right book to know, to have. That's his book, his way. It, it really is not that hard for God. Whatever people may plot in vain, all sorts of things, his will will be done. So it's not hard for God to give us the right book, the book that he meant for us to have, the inspired word of God, every, every book in here. And then it's translated into all sorts of dialects. And sometimes man gets it wrong. But like I said this morning in Bible class, in my opinion, the best version is not one version, but a multitude of versions. If you're confused about a verse and the way that it says things, go look at a different translation. Go look at a, uh, six or seven translations. 
There are so many resources. We use our phones for all sorts of things. Use them for, to look up different versions of the Bible. I have an app, and most of you probably do too, that has the Bible in 45 different ways, translations. It's pretty incredible to be able to just flip through that. And you can Google search scriptures all day long and find amazing things and correlations and cross-references. There's all sorts of things that we can utilize our phones for besides cat videos. And uh, I encourage you to do that if you have one. Use it for God's will. Use it to understand His Word better. But God's plan will be delivered. And He'll use anything and anyone, even if it's an enemy of God, He'll use that person for His glory. And He'll take a crazy messed up... Uh, I heard it described one time. There was a kid that took a crown no maybe it was a marky a uh, marker sharpie uh, a mixed sharpie and marker i call it a marky but nevertheless maybe it was a, a a sharpie and they took their wall and they colored all over it with that sharpie and made a big old mess all over it you know they were left for 10 minutes and they ruined the entire wall end to end you know they couldn't just stay in one spot they had to go across the whole thing and their mother came in the room and realized what had happened, and they hired Lonnie Jones. I don't know if you know the name Lonnie Jones, but he was my youth minister growing up. And they hired him because he liked to do art. He liked to draw, he liked to do airbrush, and all sorts of things. And so they said, can you do something with this wall? I want you to take this wall and make it into a scene. And I think the kid liked dinosaurs. So he made this big mural across the whole wall using the different lines and lines and marks that the kid had made. And he made like a pterodactyl and he made like a brontosaur, bronchiosaurus and uh, T-Rex and a scenery of these bushes and plants and palms and all sorts of fun stuff for that kid to see out of his crazy mess. Well, God can do that in a much more masterful way with our mess of a life. We can mess up and mess up and mess up and then we give our lives to God and He can make a masterpiece out of us. And He can take whatever we will towards His will. And I just love that story because I make a mess of my life. And if it were up to me, I don't think I would have made it this far. But if we let God take control, all the more good He can do for us. Whether we let Him be in control of our life or not, however, His will will be done in the end. I would rather choose Him now while I have a choice than be made to kneel after this life is over. Wouldn't you? I want to choose to kneel while I have a choice, not be made to kneel after I don't have a choice and my life is over anymore. Okay, so we want God sometimes to take away all of our problems. But what happens if you have no problems? Typically, if we have nothing to worry about, then we get involved in things that maybe we don't need to, maybe aren't good for us, maybe give us too much pride in self and self-confidence and self-will and start doing things that God wouldn't want us to do because we have no worries. Sort of like, again, we talked about the age thing. Why do we live such a short life compared to when the world first was made and they lived almost a thousand years? Well, I don't know. It's just my opinion, but I think pride has something to do with that maybe. And if we were allowed to live a thousand years and we knew that our life expectancy was a thousand years, would you, as a 15-year-old, as a 30-year-old, as a 100-year-old, would you be rushing to live your life for God or would you try to sow your seed? You know, would you try to live the wild life as long as you can? Well, I got 800 more years. I'm not worried about living for God now. I mean, we already do that in this life. Typically, it's very hard to convince a teenager 
to live and give up their life for God. Maybe sometimes even harder in your 20s. We become very selfish very fast in this life and we think there's no end to it. And then we turn 30 and 40 and so forth and we realize, whoa, I'm slowing down. Things aren't the same as they were. Maybe I need to get serious. But by that point, you've made so many bad habits, maybe you'll never choose God. Because it's always too busy. Because you're always too busy. Because I'm always too busy with, with what? Things that don't matter. What are we praying for? Are we constantly praying for God's will to be done in our life? For boldness? To be a better servant of Him no matter what is in our way? Or are we just praying for God to take all our problems away? All our struggles away? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But is that our only prayer ever? Have you ever thought about what your life might be like if you prayed for boldness? If you prayed for courage and opportunities to talk to somebody else about Him? And had the courage enough to do it. And maybe we should be more worried about our response and our prayer to God. To remember how awesome He is. And ask Him to help us be bold in our life. Courageous. Through obedient faith to be servants for Him. No matter what persecution, persecutions we have to go through. What physical trials and difficulties may come our way. We live our lives tell, telling people whether we're sick or not. Well, how you doing? Well, uh, I'm sick again. Or, I just got over being sick. Or, I'm hurting. Or, I'm better. And when we say, people say, how are you? That's typically where we go. When really... Maybe our mindset should be whether we're faithful Christians of God or not and striving to live for Him. And, and if that's what our focus is, we're good every day, right? We're happy every day because this life's health is just for a moment. And what really matters is whether we're living for Him or not. Not whether we're physically well or not. And I'm not saying I don't do it. I do it too. And when I get sick, I get down. And when Pam's feet hurt, then I worry about that. Is she going to be able to get over it? By the way, she is feeling some better, but uh, she's still struggling. See, there we go. Talking about health again and whether we're, our feet feel good or not. You know, it's what keeps us moving. But really what matters is whether we're moving for God. Whether we're striving to be bold for God in our life and give Him our life every day. You don't decide to become a Christian one day and never think about it again. You have to be, decide to be a Christian every day. It's not a one-time decision. It's a lifetime decision that you constantly have to remake. Uh, when, when Pam and I said our vows to each other, one of the things I said was, I know there will be some days that we may not like each other, but we'll always, I will always love you. And that's a choice. Similarly, there are times that I feel weak and I don't always want to do what God wants me to do. But I always want to do God's will. And I always want to choose God, whether, whether I feel like it or not. Feelings are fleeing. Feelings are temporary. Sometimes we feel happy. Sometimes we feel sad. But we should always be faithful Christians no matter how we feel. Whether we're hungry, whether we're sick, whether we're tired, whether we feel like people don't like us and it bothers us, whether we feel wanted, appreciated, what are we doing about it? How are we living our lives? And the first century Christians... I don't think they had time to worry about that stuff. And I think that was the guy's point that I was going to school with. We get so wrapped up in, starts with a D and ends with distractions. We get so wrapped up in distractions. I mean, what is not a distraction today? Everything is 
touch and get it done. And if it doesn't get done in five seconds, then it's too long. I've waited too long. And I better have everything at the tip of my finger or shame on you. Whether we're going to a restaurant, whether we're getting gas at a pump, whether we're wanting a video to come up, whether we're trying to watch something, whether we're trying to get our computer to work, or whether we're talking to someone, we want them to answer that phone. Whatever it may be, we want it now. And we get so wrapped up in the distractions of life, we forget what life is about. It's not about that stuff. It's about God and living for Him and spreading His Word. I mean, that's why we came here tonight, to live for God, to do His will. So let's not go out the rest of this week and not live for Him and not do His will. Let's pray, pray prayers of boldness and confidence, asking God to, to give us more of that so that we can be what we need to be for Him no matter what comes our way. That doesn't mean we can't pray for God to take our trials and tribulations away. I'm not saying that at all. If you're getting that out of this lesson, then I'm sorry. I'm not saying it right. I'm saying let's not make that our total focus. And if we have trials and tribulations, then what? Then we turn away from God? We want to have boldness for Him no matter what trials and tribulations come our way. It's, op it's okay to pray for those things. So... When Peter and John came before, the priests and the captains of the temple, the Sadducees came upon them greatly annoyed, chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 4, because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, put them in custody, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed. A number of the men came of about 5,000. What a common number that is recurring in the Bible. 5,000, 5,000, 4,000, 5,000. That's a lot of people. 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. On the next day, the rulers and the elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem. Okay, and they had a decision to make. What are we going to do? with these disciples of Jesus. Well, the people really liked them. You know, remember they had healed this guy. They had, this, this lame man who was at least 40 had now been healed. Everybody understood this was a miracle. And Peter and John proclaimed that it was from Jesus, this man that was killed. And they're saying it's because of him that he was saved. And so they didn't know exactly what to do with them. So they put them in jail and eventually sent them on their way. I think they told them not to talk about it anymore. Don't talk about this Jesus anymore. And they said, well, you can tell us what you want, but we're going to talk about Jesus basically, right? Sorry. I mean, can you imagine being that bold? And then they come back to the people. They're very other uh, disciples of, of Christ gathered together in this place when they were released verse 23 they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them and when they heard it they lifted their voices together to God and said sovereign Lord and that's when they prayed this prayer not that they wouldn't be persecuted anymore not that they wouldn't have problems but that the Lord who made everything and then going back to this prayer of the Gentiles plotting and ra raging in vain and this city was gathered together against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate whatever your hand had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look upon the threats and grant your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. Verse 29. And then when they had prayed this thing, the place shook. Wow. You're on the right track. You're doing the right thing. If something like that happens to you while you're praying to God. And that's what happened as they were gathered in this place. 
What are we praying for? They had everything in common. Verse 32, a little bit after that. We are here together tonight and we can strengthen each other and encourage each other or we can weaken each other and break each other down. I hope it's the first and I think it is. And I hope that we continue to grow and develop and be bold for Christ no matter what's in front of us, no matter what's put in front of us to live our lives the way that He wants. Remember, His will is going to be done no matter what in the end and his children will be called to heaven and those who are not his children have their place ready for them as well I don't want to go where God isn't I want to go where God dwells I want to be with him forever and I want to live this life according to what he wants doesn't mean we can't pray for the sick. I think we should. It doesn't mean that we can't pray for us to not have as many problems as we do. That's fine. You can pray whatever you want. That's the beauty. It's a direct connection to God through Jesus Christ the Son. But I encourage you to also pray to do God's will no matter what is in your life. No matter what comes to you. And don't lose faith because you've got a mess of a life. We all do. Pray for God to make it a masterpiece for Him. And for Him to be the cause of your life. And to help you in that. If you have anything that you need that we can help you with, that God can help you with, but you need to say it in a public way, that whether you want to become a Christian or come back to Him, if you would, come while we sing together. All to Jesus I surrender. served. 332. Let me get there. Lead me to Calvary. Just the first verse. If you have any need to partake of the Lord's Supper, come down as we sing this, please. King of my life, I crown thee now. Thine shall the glory be. Lest I forget thy thorn crown brow. Lead me to Calvary. Lest I forget, guess 
testimony and lest I forget thine agony lest I forget thy love for me lead me to Calvary it's been a good day it's been a real good day we uh we're on the, on the right side, I know that. And we're, we're on the right team, if we want to call that. It might not be nice to do that, but I call it the team. We're in the right family, that's for sure. So um, I, know I, for one, am happy to be in this family, and I know you are too. So uh, we have several that are traveling that are not here tonight. Reach out to them, let them know that we miss them, and uh, pray for them, that they'll be here back with us soon especially our visitors today. Is there anything we need to talk about? We have a lot of things coming up. I don't know any dates or any time. Andy's waving to me. I won't be able to hear him. I don't know what he's saying. Something about photos. Go ahead. What you got? Hey, uh, the sign sheet, is that sign? The sign? The sign sheet for the photos from 17 to 24. Okay, so there's some sign-up sheets for the photo photographs outside there. All right, there we go. There we go. All right, so the, if you if you want to get on that time slot, that's what you do. Sign up. Is that how that works? Wait a minute. What? Two different Sundays. Two different Sundays. Okay. All right. Here you go. Yeah. You go sing the next song, and before the close of prayer, I'll say. Good. There you go. That sounds good. Is there anything else? We're doing a new directory is what's going on, and that's pretty, that's pretty neat. We're going to sing uh, first verse of 648, and then we'll be dismissed in prayer, which we just talked about. 648. Let's see, it says here, stand up, stand, well, stand up for Jesus. There we go. Following this song, we'll go to God in prayer. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldier of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is there. Just a few announcements here. Uh, September 15th, we have a Friday night singing at 7. It should end around 9, and then we'll have finger foods following. And as Al was mentioning, we have the uh, directory photos. Those are September 17th and the 24th. Andy has a sign-up sheet out, out there. Mine went blank. Uh, just sign up for that. And there's different time slots, right? Is that what you've got out there? Okay. So I didn't look at it, so... And October 15th, we have Friends and Family and Neighbors Day. So invite everyone for that. I'm going to mention this again. Uh, Tim Goldsby is back in the hospital. He is um, Tyler Horton. It's his boss. It's his boss's father-in-law. And he has uh, cancer, and it's been really rough on him. Just please be with that family. And uh, if y'all don't mind, please pray for all those that have COVID. My grandpa, as I mentioned this morning, he has COVID. So y'all, please be with him. Uh, if there's anything else, just let us know, and we'll get it mentioned out there. Uh, please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this day. We thank you for watching over us, and we thank you for our many blessings. Thank you, God, for another day to get to come here, get to sing songs to you, and get to worship you, and get to glorify everything that you've done for us. We're so thankful, God, for everything, and we pray that you please be with us throughout this upcoming week. We pray, God, that in all things we do, that we do give you the glory. And we're so thankful for your Son and his willingness to come down here and to die for us. Pray that you please be with those that have been mentioned. Please be with those that are struggling. We just thank you, God, for all that you do. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.